Hi there, my name is Andy Young and I'm one of the automotive lecturers down at Unitech in Auckland, New Zealand. And welcome to my Andy Mechanic YouTube channel. Now, the task that I've been given, or one of the tasks that I've been given today, is to fix a heater. Now on this particular heater, it's got a timer. Now I'm no qualified um, domestic mains um, electrician. I'm not. I'm an automotive uh, mechanic. But we do have electrics on cars and I understand the basics of electrics and I teach that kind of stuff at Unitech too, as well as fix lots of electrical problems on vehicles. And the timer on this heater has failed. It's given up. Now it's had a temporary repair with this tape and that's sort of made it work for some unknown reason. So we're going to take this cover off the idea is not to try and repair the timer, that's probably knackered, but to bypass the timer. So the heater is on whenever you turn it on at the mains at the wall, and the heater will go off um, whenever you turn it off at the wall. And of course, I'm hoping we can retain the actual adjustments, so we can have it hot, medium, cold, whatever. So I've got to get this panel taken off, and we'll see what's inside. So just looking at the heater, under this little clip here, and obviously all heaters are different. On this little clip, which should come off somehow, is, oh, maybe it's glued on, who knows, a couple of screws. Now I'm not too concerned if it breaks, I'd rather it didn't break. It's going to break, okay, there you go. So not really that important, we've got a couple of little screws there, and I think maybe either that just pushes in. Oh, there we go. So we'll have rid of those. That's one. Two. Yeah, well, they weren't going to come out, so we've dealt with that. Okay, a couple of screws there, and there's probably a couple more screws underneath as well. So we're entering the unknown. Oh, bigger screwdriver. Oh, hang on a minute. Whoa, they're funny ones. Obviously, they don't want people going in there. So we'll replace those with normal tech screws later on. Look at that. What a failure. Well, that very quickly stopped me getting in there, didn't it? Well, wow. okay. Very weird head of the screw. Three-sided screw look. Odd. Okay. Now, what have we got underneath? Okay, two more of those screws down the bottom, so we'll see if we can get those cracked off. Good old. Tell you what, see if we can use some pliers on that. Just to crack them off, I don't want to damage my screwdriver because it's a good little screwdriver, that one. We have movement. There we go. And I'll just put some normal self tappers in there later on. So we don't have the same problem again. Fancy doing that. They obviously want us to throw this thing away and buy a new one. Well, being a mechanic, that's against every cell in our body. Okay, now, let's get this wire untangled. There we go. Cool. Right, so see what's inside. Oh yeah, easy enough. Right. So the timer is just here, look. Oh, it's got a tilt switch on it. Look at that. If it falls over, it turns off. It's pretty good. All right, so let's see if we can get that, that timer removed. So we've got some wires here. We can only plug those. I think long, long needle those pliers for that one. 
Okay. So let's just see if we can lever that off there without damaging anything else. That's the insulation out of the way. One. And I suspect that this is the feed going down to the actual heater element. Yes, it is. So that'll be your power in, tilt sensor, and yeah, main switch there. Look, coming in. Cool. All right, well, that, basically, if we just join those two red wires together, oh, sorry, uh, tilt sensor. That's one. Okay. Now we should be able to. We're going to remove that. Can we remove that? Hmm. No, I think we're going to have to leave that in situ because the tilt sensor, which we want to keep just for safety reasons, is actually mounted off that unit. So I think it probably has a little light inside there. Ah, M motor. That's the timer, so that's why it has a negative. So with that one there is the negative, we can just seal that up and get rid of it. And all we need to do now is just connect those two wires together. So we can snip that off, change the connector to a female, plug it in there, put some insulation tape over it. <coughs> this is gonna be really easy. Okay, he says, it's probably gonna blow up anyway. Right, so we'll, let's keep that insulation for now. Let's just slide that down if we can. Is it going to slide down? No. Okay, so we'll kill that. And we need to just strip that wire back. There we go. Okay. Right. Female connector. Now we're dealing with some pretty, probably reasonably high amps. I think a yellow is too big. We need a blue. Let's go for the middle size. Right, one of the last ones. This is all the way from England, so and it's come out of my emergency motorcycle adventure trail kit. Let me fold that back on itself. A bit more extra secure. There we go. A bit more of a snug fit. Okay, now it's a blue, which means we use the middle crimp on the pliers, there we go, pop that in there, now there is a video covering how to use these things, there we go, okay just give it a check and that needs to go in there, make sure it's good and tight and that the insulation is actually on the outside, so we'll give that a little tweak. See if we can pull that out. There we go. And we will also put some tape over that because the last thing we want is this thing shorting out or going to earth. What have we got? There we go. A bit of black tape. Right. So we'll stick a little bit of tape around there. So all we're doing is bypassing that timer. That's the only thing we need to do. And that tape is going to help to keep that joint together in case it goes for a road trip somewhere. There we go. And then all we need to do with, the, with this one, the negative, is just tape the whole thing up and make it safe. So I think I'll just put a little, a little zip tie around there first. Just to give it a bit of strength. There we go. And we don't want that touching the casing because that would be pretty bad, so we'll bang some tape around that. Okay. Obviously all, all you qualified electricians out there are going to be going, no, don't do it Andy, it's so bad. But hey, this isn't my heater. It's somebody else's, and this is a favour, and there's no charge 
obviously. Wouldn't put my name on this. Okay, a bit more. And I think what we'll do is we'll put a zip tie on these wires just to stop them moving around as well, to give them a second chance of staying in place and an even less chance of them touching the side of the casing. Okay, that's pretty good. There's no way that's going to make contact. Right, another cable tie. If we just zip tie all that lot to there, should make it nice and secure. On there, we'll put one there, look like that. We'll put one around there just to hold that in place. Cool. Okay, well I reckon that's uh, that's going to work. We've still got the tilt centre working, I'm not going to break that yet. So we'll put the cover back on and we'll find some uh, self-tappers just to hold that into place properly. So we don't have to reuse those crappy, really crappy screws that were in there beforehand. I reckon they'll work. Right, star screw. Things you end up being asked to fix, really. It does seem a real shame to throw something like, like this away, though, just because of the, uh, the timer units failed. Right, top ones, and we're all done. One more. Okay. Judgment time. I'm going to find out whether or not I should ever try and fix the heater again. If it works, then the answer is yes. If it catches fire and dies, or blows all the fuses, and obviously the answer is no. Okay, so the unit's plugged into the wall, and this is the, the low high dial. When it's fully low, that actually turns the heater off. Turning it on, and yeah, I saw the lights flicker. Okay, we'll put it on high. Oh, the little light's lit up now, that's cool. Just double check. Yep. Yeah. There you go, so it's on hot. Let's see if it starts to warm up. Am I getting a shock? Now I'm all good, haven't died just yet. Perfect. Right, we'll give it a few minutes and see if it's hot. Just gonna remove this um, DIY repair. Hey, but I tell you what, I'm really impressed it worked. It made, uh, kept the heater going. Oh, people are getting cold. Well, it's still on, and I've plugged it into a circuit breaker. So, um, I don't know the name of that there, but if there's a fault on it, it would have clicked and turned the power off. So, looks like we're doing all right now. We don't really need any of that, we'll just leave that alone. It's just, it just bypassed, so it's not going to fall out. So we'll just leave, leave that as it is, it makes no, no difference to the machine being on now, it's disconnected. Oh, it's flashing. Is it flashing? No, it's the camera. That isn't actually flashing, that's on all the time. 
it's just how the camera reacts to that particular kind of light. Look at that. Cool. Okay, well, it's warming up nicely. So it looks to me like Andy Mechanic can also fix heaters. Don't ask me any questions. Don't make any complaints. I fixed it. It works. And I believe the fix is safe. So if you have a heater which for some reason the timer has got a bit dodgy, then I'm not telling you to take the cover off and have a look inside and, can, and reconnect some wires and bypass that particular unit. Because, hey, in the eyes of the law, that will be very unsafe. Okay, it's done. <laughs> Should I really put this video on YouTube? Who knows? Okay, well, maybe somebody in the world will have found this video helpful. I don't know. The point is, it's fixed, and this would have gone in the skip and cost 100 bucks, 200 bucks to replace, who knows. So now it's going to continue its life and keep somebody's legs nice and warm. Okay, well, I was going to say any questions or comments, leave them below. Well, you can. Feel free to leave, leave questions and make some comments if you like. Just try and keep them toned down a little bit, especially you electrician guys out there. Um, and I'll do whatever I can to respond. Maybe I'll just ignore them, depending on how bad they are. I won't remove them, though. It could be quite funny. I hope you found this video helpful. Uh, if you'd like to subscribe to the channel, then why not? I'm now over 100 subscribers, and I'm really aiming to get to 200 um, within the next couple of months. And 500 by the end of the year. Who knows? It's all down to you, crew. Okay, well, my name's Andy Young. I'm one of the automotive lecturers down at Unitech. They would not endorse this kind of repair at all, so I don't think that Unitech has got anything to do with this kind of repair on a heater, because they have, it's getting warm here now. Uh, they haven't, and they would probably reprimand me for doing something like this, I'm sure. Um, but maybe it's going to be helpful to somebody, and I'm quite sure lots of people take heaters apart to try and find out what's wrong with them so they can fix them. And maybe this, is just, this video is just going to help one or two of those heaters to be reused and to save just a little tiny bit of the world's resources. Who knows? Okay, thanks for watching. Over and out.